these lemons right here, they're so, so big. of the morning everybody as you can see there's still nobody here it's 8 a.m. because you know everyone's on vacation who's up at 8 a.m. well that's me because I'm going on tour around Positano and all around the I'm not even sure but here's what they what they, they don't tell you in the reviews not that I'm complaining but it's like it would have been nice to be given a heads up first because Positano is like all hills and there's different varying levels for hotels and restaurants and whatnot. Our hotel is literally prime location. It's at the beach. What does that mean? It's a lot of stairs to get down. So that's our hotel right up there. This one, Cobo de Saraceni. And then you gotta make all your way, way down, all the way there. And then you gotta make your way up again, right over there. And then once you get to the top, there's more stairs and more zigzag. Amazing. <laughs> so this is our room. It's actually quite a big, big room. This is the toilet. Super big. And then here is here's the bed. Ta -da -da! And the amazing view by the beach. Wow. right after Positano so I learned that a couple of tourists what they do is they actually book hotels in Priano it's not the fanciest place it's no Positano it's a much simpler town so what they do is they book a, a hotel there and then they just travel whether by car or by walking literally by walking because you can't technically do that if you're if, if you have all the time in the world the other thing that I learned so take a look at the back and that's actually one of the souvenir stores that we've passed by and uh, this place Amalfi, Amalfi Coast a part from the fact that it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. They do a lot of beautiful ceramics. And one of the interesting ceramics that I saw is this one. Okay, because in our hotel, the name of our hotel is Cova de Saraceni. Now, if you know your history, Saraceni is from the word Saracens, and they were Turkish Muslim pirates. So, in our hotel it actually means cove of the saracens there is some ceramics right over here that you can see it's like they're black so we actually wonder why they were and now it makes absolutely uh, makes perfect sense now in the past they actually had like watchtowers from certain areas of the amalfi coast of course they don't use it anymore but those watchtowers were basically used in the past so that they can inform the people hey everybody there's some pirates coming let's watch out
so beautiful. The sun came out. It was supposed to be raining today. This is Amalfi. This is the capital city of the Amalfi Coast. So like I said, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, the whole Amalfi Coast. So a lot of the locals, like you see the exteriors of all the buildings, of all the shops or whatnot, all of those have to remain the same. You can do renovations on the inside, but never on the outside. You gotta get a lot of permits. So. It can be a hassle for especially if you live here if you want to do some let's say extend a window or let's say um, add a little something into your balcony or whatnot but at the same time though that's what makes the authentic the character to it that makes it all so antique I guess is, is the word okay so the day tour that usually that you do, so you go to Positano, then you go to all the neighboring towns, and this one is Amalfi, so that is a day tour that you can do. Usually you rent a car, which is what we did, meaning uh, we went to the driver, which is a private tour, or just taking the different towns, stop you in different stops for photos, for shopping, which is what we're about to do right now. Okay, forget the shopping. One of the main things to do here in Amalfi is go up this beautiful church. And when I say up, oh yeah. <laughs> 60 steps. Here we go. So now we're downstairs, we're at the crypt of the Basilica of the Cross and uh, this is where the remains of St. Andrew are. Isn't that such a beautiful altar? Even all around. So you see that, that, and the, the that. <laughs> so um, usually I guess on certain days or special occasions, the relics of St. Andrew are actually displayed for people to pray. Now, who is St. Andrew? Well, earlier I was mentioning that there are pirates who would try and assault like, these cities because it is by the water. There was, there the Saracens were here in 1544 and they were about to assault the city. And of course the locals started praying to St. Andrew and to St. Matthew. And by a miracle, the pirate ship sank. So ever since then, or I'm not sure ever since then, but St. Andrew has always been like the patron saint for Amalfi, and I believe, um, and um, Matthew for Saraceno, I believe is the name. So that's who they pray to for protection against the foreign invaders. Okay, nice mark of my shades. Okay, so we're inside the church, we're inside the cathedral itself, and here, I was speaking of relics, you can actually find the back of the skull of St. as well it goes on to continue our religious pilgrimage across Europe. Alright, one of the things, uh, my favorite things that I actually love is bread. It's like my ultimate weakness and there's this thing in Italy it's called colomba it's it's um, it's an Easter bread it's in the shape of a cross it's really really quite big and the classic flavor is just like with powdered sugar with a bit of almonds and just I don't know what else but it comes in varieties like chocolate and whatnot and it's so good <laughs> And the best one that I tried was in that um, monastery where the priests actually make it. It was in Rome. I can't remember what church it was because I think I've visited over a hundred churches this trip. But anyway, so I'm here in Amalfi and there's another bakery that sells it. Actually, a lot of bakeries actually sell it and it's just a matter of I wonder if it's good and I just want to buy them all because they're so freaking good. <laughs> Now, just 
just a little bit of uh, just a little bit of trivia or heads up. So here in Napoli, if you tour around this area with the Amalfi Coast, Positano, Amalfi, Sorrento, so on and so forth, Napoli is the capital city. That's why when you were driving through the roads, it was you know it's traffic because like people who live in other areas here, they actually uh, commute, do their commute, and this is where they work. So it's kind of like this is like the. I guess the, the center or like Manila, you know, very old Manila. So a lot of construction is being done as well. So expect a lot of traffic if you're going to be coming here, especially if you're planning a day trip, because some tours, they actually, they, let's say you're given two hours to actually tour the city, but you have to remember, given the traffic, sometimes the traffic is allotted into that time that eats up your two hours. So it's always really careful planning. But if you're really wanting to get that feel of those small, quaint European towns, my personal preference, preferences are of course the Amalfi along the coast. I would definitely uh, uh, recommend that. But Napoli though, why will people come here? Well, this is actually one of the oldest cities in Italy. And, and although it has many firsts in the history of Italy, the most important one I think that is worth noting is that this is the birthplace of pizza. <laughs> okay, now I'm sure a lot of you have actually eaten pizza one time in your life. And in particular, there's a flavor that's called margarita. Now, think in your head right now, what are the three ingredients in a margarita pizza? Mozzarella, basil, and tomato sauce. Mozzarella, basil, and tomato sauce. Those are just the three basic ingredients. Now, think about it. What are those three colors? Basil is green, mozzarella is white, and red is tomato sauce, which make up the, da -da -da, the Italian flag. That's it. Now, those are, that was like the original, original flavor. All the other flavors, like with ham, prosciutto, with mushrooms, with garlic, all those other flavors have just been through the evolution of time and through the demand, I guess. So this is the birthplace of pizza. That's the only thing you gotta know about Napoli. At least for me, that is, right? <laughs> so funny I can't believe I'm going crazy over lemons <laughs> I have never seen a lemon so big big, big. <laughs> there's so many like orange lemon trees just all over in the streets here in Sorrento all the way to Positano and Napoli amazing and even like this place it's like a bazaar of sorts but with like Italy prices <laughs> They're so cute. They're like offering me food. They're eating their own food. It gave me melon flavored, like, um, it's like the limoncello, but melon flavored. Wow, so good. <laughs> that was so entertaining. I just wanted to show you guys because even from early when I passed by them, they were just. You can tell they're just fucking around with the customers. They're like, hello. <laughs> oh, the chocolate with the limoncello is really good. So it's almost like a Malteser. And then when you bite into it, there's like limoncello that's just bursting out of the chocolate. Oh, that was really nice.
system is actually not the original name of this place. If you can see, it's all ancient ruins. In fact, ruins is not really the perfect word for it because it's so well preserved. This is a UNESCO site. Um, it's about an hour drive away or maybe an hour and a half away from Posadero. So behind me, that is the Temple of Athena. And Athena is the goddess of war and wisdom. When the Romans took, okay, let me, let me walk back walk back walk back so around 2600 years ago this place was discovered by the Greeks and they called it Pasadona Pasadona after Poseidon who is the god of the sea and then eventually later on when the Romans took over this place they changed the name to Paestum now uh, Greeks and Romans they pretty much have the same Poseidon, uh, like in this case, Athena. Athena is Greek and in Roman it's Minerva. And Minerva is the same thing, a goddess of war and wisdom. I didn't even know that, I just found that out today. Anyway, this is the one archaeological site that is so beautiful and so well preserved, especially in the Mediterranean area. That's why there's actually a lot of um, school kids who are here just exploring this place and they're not only from Italy they're from neighboring countries as well they come here for a few days and explore this area wow talk about an amazing field trip these flowers right here they're so beautiful but this is actually Judas tree coming from the outside if you actually go inside this is the remains of what is an amphitheater which is something that the romans did and this is one for the gladiators where they would fight as a form of entertainment so inside here in the museum you're actually going to see like some of the pieces that were actually taken from those temples especially when it came to like the artworks the figurines and the little artifacts so they could they could actually take a closer look as to what daily life could have been during the greek times and the Roman times. Now a lot of us when we think of history we always think of like the Bronze Age, the Ice Age, the Roman Age, the, the Greek Age as something so separate but if you actually learn in spirituality you know all these studies how everything is connected everything is one flow it actually really is true it's so interesting that there's one figurine here that they show is Heather. So Heather she is the goddess of fertility. If you think about it um, these gods were pagan gods. There's another figurine of Hera and she's breastfeeding a child. Once again, a pagan god. Now the Romans actually adapted that into the Virgin Mary holding on to baby Jesus. So sometimes we think that everything is like, oh, it only came from this time, it only came from this time. But no, it's that they're actually quite connected to one another. Here's a travel tip that I have for you guys. You know, I understand that not everybody has all the money to pay for, pay for private tours and so on and so forth. But sometimes when you come to places like this, especially like this, everything's like ruins. And a stone just looks like a stone. A rock looks like a rock. And you have no idea what history goes behind it. So sometimes you're gonna have to pay a little bit of extra money for a guided tour because you can further appreciate what the place is and not just look at it and have photos and you have no idea what it stood for, like literally and figuratively. So yeah. Okay, if you guys have actually been to the Parthenon, I've never been to the Parthenon. I will be going there in a few months and I'm really excited for that. Um, but my mom was saying, you know, because she's been now to both and she was saying as much as the Parthenon is really, really beautiful, um, you can only see one side. So, you know, it has its pros and cons as opposed to here, you can actually go around, go around and you can actually go inside like my like what my sister is doing right now, which is so cool. So Neptune. So this is a temple of Neptune and I learned that Neptune is the Roman name for Poseidon. So earlier I was telling you that this place is called Poseidona in the beginning by the Greeks and then it was uh, taken over by the Romans and then they just uh, converted their names and it's pretty much still the same. It's kind of like Isabel is the same as Elizabeth or Veronica is the same as Veronique. Yeah. Okay, so the goddess, or goddess of Neptune, this temple of Neptune is the most majestic and best preserved of the temples in Paestum. And indeed, it truly, truly is. And you can go inside too. 
you know it's not good. Do you see those clouds? Hopefully the rain is not gonna come. And last but not the least, you have this, also called a temple for Neptune. They were saying probably it was a public building and they actually called it a basilica. And a basilica today we know is a church, but in basilica in Roman actually means a court of law. Now you know. Greeks versus Romans. Not that it's a competition, but the Greeks, they were just amazing architects and designers and whatnot because cement guys or concrete was only invented by the Romans later on. But the Greeks, when they built this, imagine it was like giant blocks that they just stacked one on top of the other like Lego. So you have to think like, how the hell did they do that? They had ancient cranes, they had ancient something they had like wow and then eventually yeah the romans they invented the concrete and it kind of helps it's kind of like egg it's like a binder to help like ingredients put together wow that's amazing i didn't even know that and the reason why also this second one right here is considered the most well preserved and the most beautiful it's also because I think of the symmetry of, of the number of columns from the sides to the front to the back. So it has some mathematical precision to it. And you know, like in photography, there's the rule of thirds. There's everything about balance and proportion. So yeah, that has a lot to do with it too. So from Greeks to Romans, Italy, I hope you guys learned something new from that, from the different temples that I showed you, when it seems like it's ruins, but there's actually more to it. I'm Bianca Valeria, until our next vlog, bye guys!